Hi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Davy Community Worship Center. We are a community of believers committed to following Jesus Christ and spreading his love and message to those around us. On this channel, you'll find weekly sermons, Bible studies, and other resources to help you grow in your faith and connect with other believers. We hope you'll join us for one of our worship services, and we look forward to getting to know you. Thanks for stopping by, and hope the content blesses you on this channel. Okay, greetings, everyone. My presentation to you as co-laborers with God. The subject is gleaned from the text that was so heavily read by our young brother. From 1 Corinthians chapter 3. For the benefit of those of you who are not here then. 1 Corinthians 3. And he read the entire chapter. And caused us to read with him. But I will bring your attention from the verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 3 and the verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. Verse 10, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, we can say unto us, as wise master builders, the apostle Paul said to them, he laid the foundation and others build thereon. But everyone should take heed how he or she builds thereon. For other foundation can no man build or lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There's an accompanying Old Testament scriptures that you may read for your own convenience. It is Isaiah 28 and the verse 16. May the Lord be pleased to bless these words to our hearts today. And the thought that I want to leave with us to really think on and ponder on, very sobering indeed, as I mentioned two times already, it is co-laborers with God. And I think all of us would want to echo this very sobering term, co-laborers, co-workers. It is very frightening to me anyhow To know that simple fellows like you and me can be partnering with the creator. Very frightening. Uh, when the spirit of the Lord laid this in my heart some three, four weeks ago, I sat for hours reading the scripture and pondering over it. Is this really true? Knowing who God is, the creator, and knowing who we are. If, if he could call us to partner with him. In soul winning, how, how could that be? For us to be asked by God Almighty to partner with him in winning souls for the kingdom. I think that's a task he alone could manage very well. It is very frightening indeed. Co-partners with God in kingdom building. Very frightening. I, I'm scared as I looked at it. Um... Laborers with God are not ordinary people. Amen is right. If you think it was ordinary, then you're going to learn today for the next few minutes that it's not ordinary indeed. It's just not ordinary. And saints of God, the apostle declared that he could not address the Corinthians as spiritual people. I like when the young man read it. And how he emphasized it. That the apostles said he could not have addressed the Corinthians as 
spiritual people. For he heard this letter was addressed to them while he was in prison. So maybe someone brought the news to him that something wrong were going on in the church. And so he addressed them. I would like to say to you that there are many theologians and historians who would want us to understand that when the apostle wrote while he was in prison, he had his secretary there who wrote for him as the Spirit of God came upon him. He spoke and they wrote. They document what the apostles had to say. Many times their, their hands were shackled in chains. So they couldn't write. But as the Spirit of God spoke, the secretaries wrote, and we have something to read what happened. He said he, he was sorry that he couldn't address them as Christians. For they were, it was reported to him that there were stripes and quarrelings and fuss among them. Division existed. The apostle then proceeded to explain in very sobering terms on what grounds he wrote this epistle upon the fact that there was contention going on among the people of God. And he want to, wanted to remind them that they are all laborers with God in his kingdom and there should be no contention. He declared that the, the different workers in the church were but only privileged instruments in the hand of the same God who has called us to labor in his vineyard with him. And this is very frightening indeed. We are very privileged. You know, there are some church people who think and feel that they are granting some of us favors. You know what I mean? And so we, we man, you're lucky to have me in your church. Yeah. You could give me a break. You are the lucky one. You are the privileged one. You are the blessed ones. There's nothing particular about me that you are privileged. God could have found better than me to be your pastor. Oh yes, I am only privileged that he has chosen me to be ministering to you. I am, you see, let me tell you something further. That the, the, God is himself glorified in our work because we work for him and he calls us. Now, labors together with God is so profound that I spent many hours gleaning from other theologians and Bible historians and preachers what was the apostle really saying. I have discovered that the Labor is a classical Greek word. The word labor is a Greek word. And it's a very classical Greek word. Labor. A verb which signifies toil. And you know, a, a verb is a working, is a busy fellow. It signifies toil in the business of trading with the idea of the pursuit of gain. It doesn't make sense we work unless we have an idea, our feelings, our ambition that we are going to succeed. Every labor, our laborer expect to get gain. Now, are we gaining in the part of the vineyard where the Lord has placed us to work? I will pose this question to you a little further on. Because labor itself is a God-ordained thing. Labor is a God-ordained word from the very beginning. It is God's purpose for human to work. In fact, you remember I told the first man back there in the Garden of Paradise, very profound, he said, by the sweat of your brow, you are going to eat food. So you, that means you have to labor or work for your food. Labor is a God-ordained word. It is, a very, it is very clear from the interchangeableness that it is a, work that keeps, it's a word that keeps us busy. Labor. Well, 
and the principles that is set by our Lord according to St. Luke chapter 10. St. Luke 10 and the verse 7 is very clear. He said the laborer is worthy of his salary. Yeah. And the word of God tells us that if somebody works for you, you shouldn't even allow the sun to go down before you pay him or her. Because he said, if you, if you refuse to pay the work, your worker, and the sun goes down and your worker is hungry, and he couldn't take home anything to his family, and he cried to the Lord, the Lord will hear him, and the Lord will avenge you know, I, I, th these words bother me that if somebody does something for me and they charge me a dollar, I'm going to give them a dollar fifty. Yes, just to make sure I'm in line with God's word. And this is why some of you believe I am that generous. I'm not all that generous. It's the word of God that is beating me up. Yeah, I just want to know my worker goes away happy. Happy and didn't feel that I've swingled him or her. Because they will go to God and cry. God said if they do that, he will hear and he will avenge. And he will punish you for robbing your worker. For the workman is worthy of his, of his pay. Did you hear that? He declared, the apostle declared in sobering terms, the platform on which he launched is, is epistle to the people of God. One, you see, it is God, the same one God, who has commissioned each laborer with his spiritual gifts, who alone has uh, prospered each one's work. And any work that God has appointed us to, we must succeed. As a young pastor, you may have heard some of you, I am not too sure, but as a young pastor, I never forswear my bishop sent me. I know providing it is God who permits me to go there. Even if rain don't fall there, the tree have to be here. Because he may send me there for a miraculous purpose. So I never fuss about a bishop don't send me to a good church. And, and I, I, There's no church good if God is not there. And every church is good if, if God is there. Yeah. Amen. I just accept it and I say praise God and I go and I pray. And before I could get up, my knees revival start because it is God who appoints me there. I tell you this, the church of God people, if God appoints you to do anything, he's going to bless you. Uh, maybe you didn't hear me well. I said if God appoints you to do anything, believe me, he is going to bless you because he's the one who makes the appointment. The apostle has, has urged on each one for that. They are to take their appointment serious. And this is what I would like to urge upon all the church workers. Take your appointment or your election serious. The apostle has urged on each one for a more determined action in their service to God. And he exhorted each one to rise into a higher region in which they would discern that very special spiritual power of working together with God. You, we are workers together, not for God, but with God. This is a very serious statement. It's no anky panky. That means that God is there with you. Isn't that clear? We are working together with him, you know. So the special energy and the special power that we need to do his work. He's the one who has called us and he's the one who will be granting us special power and special energy to do his work. I tell you something, church of God, people. There is no area of God's vineyard that is ordinary. And I'm going to clear up that in a while. Oh, that these words of exhortation were heeded by the Corinthian church. Because if the Corinthian church had heeded these words, they would not have fallen into the predicament that they fell in. They would have escaped all the, uh, the divisions and clamor which have overtaken them over the years. Division and clamor. You see, all of us are laborers together with God and saints of God. Uh, there could be no more statement that could be more exalted and elevating as laborers together with God in God's vineyard. 
Amen. Let me tell you this, uh, and I'm serious about it. There's no greater sentence that could be kind uh, constructed or put together than for somebody to come and say, Brother Beeson, you are a laborer with God in God's kingdom. Oh, glory to God. You see, all of us are laborers together. It doesn't matter what position in the church we hold. May I say, may I say something to you? My position as pastor or bishop is not greater than yours as Sunday school teacher, our youth worker, our choir member. We are just laborers together. I don't know if you get me yet. Uh, the apostle has urged on each one to appreciate the position that you have in the church. You know, there are some of us not appreciative. He exhort each one to think higher than where you are. And the position that God has given to you, build it up so you can be exhorted. Listen to me. Every church, every appointment, and there are several of you sitting here. From Alexandria, do you know my first appointment? Elder Campbell, Deacon Campbell, could you stand? This man was there with me in 1963. Oh, yes, yeah, somebody said, that a young boy? Yeah. 90. He was there when the late Alan Whitaker said to the district pastor, the late district overseer, W.G. Williams, a seam there, said, we can't see what you can make out of him. That was, the, that was the appointment I got from the county overseer. Seam there, just leaving Bible school, did not graduate. I hold four pound tens and four pound ten shilling. And the principal refused to graduate me, refused to allow me to walk in my gun, refused to allow me to walk the aisle with, with my, my colleague. And he said to me, go out and work your four pound ten and when you finish, bring it back and we will give you your certificate. And I said, so help me God, the only time you see me back here, I must be the principal. And I left there and I went, you heard, I went to Jesus owned the college in Tennessee. Jesus owned the college in Tennessee when my college turned me down. And he's the one who finally trained me and sent me on to Indiana University to do my first degree. To God be the glory. Amen. 1963. There was nobody. It was a new church. Because according to them, if God called you, go and start a new church. So there was no church there. I was appointed to go and start a new church. Since God called me. I knew he called me as a little boy. I knew his anointing was upon me. I had no fear. Uh, that's me. There was a tree down there. You have, have you heard about the tree of Charlton? You ever heard about the tree of Charlton? Do you know it's a real tree? It's a guinea tree, you know. It's a real guinea tree down the tree, down Charlton, right in the town square. When the power of God came upon me, the police station was right by the guinea tree. I went out in the midnight and I preached to the guinea tree until it shook. And the police, came, I, I remember the sergeant came out and he stood and he, with his button in his hand and this, this young man in the, right in the square was preaching in the night. Because the anointing of God was upon me and there was nobody for me to preach to. But God appointed me. He appointed me to a place where there was nobody. It must be a reason. He must have sent me to wake up somebody. And so I preached the word of Almighty God. Because I consider myself a laborer with God. And it must be a reason why he sent me to Alexandria in 1963. So if I have gone there, there could be nowhere less than that for the bishop to send me. So I worship God. Oh, that these words of exhortation would mean something to you today. All of us are laborers. All of us are called by God. All of us are appointed by God. Do you hear me? And listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to understand me. I'm going to say something. Laborers together with God. And is it not profoundly true that since we are divinely created, are you divinely created? Since we are divinely created, and since we live and exist in a divinely created world, and we are divinely called into his service, we are hereby, amen, exhorted to appreciate the position where you are. Because God's divine call is upon our life. 
We are laboring together with God. We are no different from the storm. Listen to me now. We as laborers together with God. Listen to me good. We are no different from the storm. Nor the hail. Nor the snow. Nor the sun. Nor the moon. Nor the stars. Amen. All of these uh, creation are fulfilling their created purpose. The sun is shining. Look through the window. Hey, the sun is fulfilling its created purpose. Anybody hear me this morning? I'm, the, I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to talk with you. Amen. The sun is no different from me. Hallelujah. He's created to shine. I am created to preach. Hallelujah. We understand me. If you should, amen, respect your position. You are singing in the choir. The sun is no different from you. God has created it to shine, created the breeze to blow, created the rain to fall, created it to sing in the choir. Hallelujah. And so look at the sun. The sun is laughing. That's why when you're ministering God, for God you must laugh, smile, put on a smile. Amen. The mango tree is created to be a mango. And the orange tree is created to be an orange. Oh, the yam is created to be a yam. And I am created to preach master God word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are laborers. The star and me and the moon are laborers together. And the hurricane and the snow and the tornado. We are all laborers together with God. Carrying out God's purpose. Hallelujah. There's a sister sitting in church today. She was in the hospital in Miami. I went to look for her. And there were three doctors around our bed. And normally if doctors around the patient's bed, they don't allow you to come in. But they heard that it was a patient's pastor. And one of the time, one of the time when you, if you were to, you're a pastor and you go to the hospital to look for a sick and, and they let you in. The person who is sick starts to fret. Because the only time they let in the pastor, <laughs> when you're on your final journey... <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor said come on in pastor come on in so I went in I prayed and I said to the gentleman as a gentleman uh, I had on my colors you know to show them who I am oh, you know, uh, so, I, so I said gentlemen doctors do you know you are no different from me he said what do you mean pastor I said I am a servant of God and so are you one of the doctors looked at me and said Oh, I am a servant of God. I said, yes. God Almighty has given you his wisdom that you can minister to that patient, a daughter of his, so that she may get. But that patient is sitting in church today because a servant of God. Amen. One who labors with God. Help God. She, that, listen, the doctor help God. I know you don't like it, but it's so the thing set. Amen. We are helpers. You don't like it, but it's so the thing set. A part of the man. God has called you to help him. Hallelujah. God has called you to help him to win a soul for the kingdom. God has called you to help him to lay your hand on a sick and call his name and the sick will get better. We are workers and laborers together with God in his vineyard. Oh, somebody worship God. We are no different from the storms and the hail and the snow and the sun and the moon and the stars. All of them are fulfilling the purpose for which they were created. Are we? Is anybody at the reach of my voice who is not fulfilling the purpose for which you were created? God has no time to waste. God didn't waste time on you. It is because you have a purpose why he created you. Hallelujah. God don't make nonsense. I'm going to take it easy. Thank you for that. God does not make none. God don't make failure. Anybody fail is not God's fault. Everybody that God make must win. Hallelujah. You must win. Win. 
touch your neighbor and tell him to win. Hallelujah. God don't make no failure. You hear me, people? Hallelujah. God don't make no failure. Everybody that God make must be successful. Glory to Almighty God. You hear me, young man? God don't make any failure. Glory. Only success God makes. Saints of God, would it, wouldn't it be a, one, a wonderful thing to see all the members, all the members of God's church, all the members, amen, of God's church, all the body of Christ working together like are one force, one powerful force. Whether wouldn't wouldn't you would love to see that? I'm going to ask you a serious question. Wouldn't I would like to ask you a serious question? Would it wouldn't it be glorious to see all the all the things that God make fulfilling the purpose for which we are made? Wouldn't it be good to see all the members of the body of Christ coming together like all the forces of nature? Whether silent as the sun or silent as a star. Look at the force of the sun, but you don't hear nothing. Silent, but it is powerful. You go too close, you can die, burn and kill this car, but you don't hear no sound. Glory to God Almighty. Silent as the sun or silent as a star. Amen. Silent in the appearing of the flowers. Have you thought about the, the power that caused the flowers to bloom? You had never thought about it because you had never heard the power that is coming out of the, out of the flowers when it is blooming. But it's a, it's a power that God has made. Amen. To touch that flower when it comes to perfection and bloom and open up. Glory to Almighty God. Whether you are, your work is the, like the power that is a silent that caused the flower to bloom. Or the power that caused the mango to ripe. Have you ever thought there must be a power that caused the mangoes to ripe? Oh, glory to Almighty God, uh, the power that caused the yam to fit uh, underground. Uh, but there's a power that uh, that power is working with God. God, there's a power that is working with God to allow the mango tree to blossom. Uh, God, and there's a power that working with God that caused the mango tree to bear. And another power that worked with God to allow the mangoes to develop. Uh, and another power that works with God to allow the mango to ripe. Uh, amen. We which of them are you? Oh, hallelujah. Which of them are you? We are laborers together. Oh, somebody touch your neighbor and say, you're a laborer. Oh, glory to God. Touch your neighbor and tell him you're a laborer. You're a laborer together with God. Hallelujah. You must know what part of the vineyard you are. Do you cause the mango tree to blossom? Or do you cause it to knit? Or do you cause it to bear? Or do you cause it to ripe? But, uh, but there's a silent power that causes the fruits to ripe. Yes. Ah, may I say this to you, people of God? I don't know what I don't know what you think you are, who you think you are. Silent as the sun and the moon or the star. Silent power in the ripening of our opening of the flowers or the ripening of the fruit or even imposing a power as earthquake. 
there's another a very imposing power as earthquake it is said that amen you read the the history of um port royal earthquake you can still find it on your on your on your computer uh, dig it up and read it you see the day when uh, uh, port royal was having that great earthquake you remember it, it, history said all the birds came together the birds knew that something was going to happen but man did not know but the, history said all the birds got together and began to make noise and flock of bird came together and flew across the, up to the blue mountain and minutes after the birds left the earthquake came it, it is even said the dogs the dogs knew the dogs begin to hone and gather themselves together and begin to run from Port Royal into Kingston they knew that God was going to do a thing because they never sinned the bird had never sinned and the dogs had never sinned so they could understand what Jah was going to do but man man who sinned them away from the presence of God could not understand that God, amen, in his power was about to visit Port Royal. It is said, it is said that Port Royal was so ungodly, amen, that the, the rich buccaneers paid women to dance nude in front of the temple, amen, on Sunday morning. Yes, sir, on Sunday morning, they paid women to dance nude in the street in front of the temple. God does not stand nonsense for too long. He's going to show you that he's God. There comes a time when God, God has to remind the human being that there's a God somewhere. Amen. Yes, it is. It's a deeply Christian. It's a deeply Christian and scientific thought also to see God at work in these natural forces of nature at his command. God, amen. They are, they are working together with God. Not for God, but with God. The almighty God has a way of stepping into the affairs of mother nature and father nature. Amen. Sometimes, amen, and interfere with them and reveal his special divine providence. God has a time when he steps into human nature and reveal his divine providence just to remind you man that he's the almighty God and creator and he's still in charge of hurt runnings. Sometimes we need to be reminded that there's somebody who's in charge of hurt runnings. Yeah. Just a little reminder amen to you man. Every now and then, that things down here just cannot go on without him. He is the one who turns on the sun in the mornings and turn it off in the evening. And he's the one who turns on the stars. Hallelujah, he's almighty God and he runs things. Because only in, uh, there are those people, only in irregularities uh, can some people remember that there's a God, the Almighty Father, who runs things somewhere, you know. Uh, only when, when you have disaster, irregularities, uh, earthquake, and that's the time they call on God. Some people only remember God when they have an accident on the road and the car crashed. They did not remember when they were going in the car to, to pray in the morning. But when they meet an accident on the road, they call on God. I told you so many times, you are to make a friend before you need a friend. So that when you need a friend, you don't have to make him. You must have a friend. Anybody at the reach of my voice who don't have a friend, you tie out a bad place. You must have a friend. Hallelujah. If you don't have a friend, you tie out a bad place. You know, any animal tie out a bad place, then we hang. 
Hallelujah. You must have a friend. You must have a bosom friend. Somebody on new shoulder you can lean. And let nobody fool you. I told you, some people brag and both me not on a friend. Too bad for you. you. The time is coming when you're going to have one. You're going to need one. Amen. Make sure you have a God before you need God. Amen. Make sure you know God before you need him. That when you need him, you can call on him. Oh, will somebody worship with me? Oh, glory. There are those who just do not believe that God is at work always. And is he's everywhere. Not only at work, he's everywhere. Omni present. He's everywhere. And therefore, the unconscious forces of nature are also working together with him. The wind and the sun working with him. Amen. Carry, carry out the divine purpose for which they were created. Divine purpose for which they were created, you know. Saints of God, the universe is God's husbandry. Our God's creation. The universe is God's vineyard. Amen. And the same must be said with much higher emphasis about human. We are God's property. Me belong to God. You belong to God. When people talk into you, must know. Let go, though. Your husband must know your God property and can't treat you any old how. And your wife must know that you are God's property, can't treat you any old. But you got to live that light that they can see that and grasp that. Amen. The children must know that the appearance of God's property. We belong to God. We belong to the Almighty God. And how we treat one another is how we treat God. Saints of God, what a far higher level of being do we live and work as laborers with God. Being possessed of spiritual faculties and integrity, amen, and, uh, and power, amen. Those of, of the same as those of our work, of, of our maker, have I said too much here? Maybe, you, maybe I should repeat that you could grasp what I say. I said, saints of God, what a far higher level of being do we live and work as laborers with God. Being, being possessed of spiritual faculties and integrity, amen, in comparison to our maker. That's what I've just said. In comparison to our maker, those of our maker, we are in, entrusted by him with certain amount of power and authority. Amen. Do you understand me? I want you to get me. We are empowered by the almighty God. God, that we can say to Satan, move or walk off. Hallelujah. It is a power of Almighty God because we are co laborers with Him so that we can delightfully feel that we are co partners with Him and we are His co co laborers, people of God, for human being to have such power and privilege to, uh, to cooperate with God, to work with God as co laborer It is not ordinary thing. We are not ordinary people. We are God's creation. When I call your brother and you call me brother or sister or whatever, we, I say good morning brother or sister. We are, I am greeting you as I am greeting a servant of the God or a child of the almighty God. That's what I am doing. Now saints in the spiritual husbandry of the church. All is God's. You are God's. I said in the spiritual husbandry of the church. Or the spiritual vineyard of the church. All plants in there belong to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. All God's vineyard. The church is God's field. Such is a, a portion of God's world. Hey, it's a portion of God's vineyard. You know what I mean? People of God. Amen. He, the creator, created human beings as instruments and a 
appointed all of us to work with him, alongside him. Anybody whom God got, got um, saved or who is converted by your testimony, is God send you to go lead that one to him. You are co-partnering with God to get somebody saved. Can anybody co-partner with Jesus Christ, the creator, to get people converted. Yes, you're a partner. You're a partner whenever you're singing in the choir. You're singing as a partner with God Almighty. Whenever you work, whenever you're in, call somebody. Hey, Jonathan, I didn't see in church on Sunday. Are you all right? Call them up and tell them they weren't in church on Sunday. Call them up and say, hey, you weren't on the choir Sunday. Where were you? Were you gone roving about the place without authority? My, my, you know, my father told me that every litter of pig have a rogue in there. They so have 12 pig and my father said one of them is a rogue. And the rogue is the one, hey man, who lead all the rest astray. And go, go for the man cocoa field and root down the cocoa, whole cocoa field. One cause it is a rogue. If you notice when them lining up is one in front. Everywhere they're going is one in front. Every litter has a rogue. And every church has one. Somebody said more than one. Lead people astray. Lead them astray when you should be in church worshiping. You're going to love all about the place without authority. Rogue. Brother Rogue and Sister Rogue. We can delightfully feel that we are co-partnering with God when we conduct ourselves as God would have conducted himself. Amen. It is only fair to say to uh, Brother Brown, the superintendent of Sunday school, you know, I won't be in Sunday school on Sunday. That is honorable. Nothing is wrong. You can't be there all the way. You're not God. You're not omnipresent. You have other business to take care of. You've got to be out every now and then. Hey, but say something to somebody you now. That somebody can know where you are. That in our prayer we can say, oh God, I pray for John Brown. He's on his way to look for his cousin. Keep him from accident, oh God. Bring him back to us safely. Yes, accountability is right, man. Hey, Amen. My friends, hear me. The, the, the sunbeam and the, and the quickening and the empowering manifestation of God's grace is given. The sun sunbeam and the quickening power of God Almighty grace is given to us that we can partner with him in kingdom building. And with long, listen me, my friend, with long patience, our Lord is waiting on us to demonstrate that power he has given to you. Uh, ask him to shine. You know, you remember what I told you? It was in one, one, one patriot in the Bible. Yes, I'm sure. He, uh, his prayer this morning was very simple. Could you smile at me, oh God? Can you imagine you getting on your knees to pray and asking God to smile on you? God, all I want you to do today is smile on me. Hallelujah. And can you imagine, can you ever have a vision of God looking down on you and smiling? It doesn't matter who frowned. It, it doesn't matter who frowned for that day. God's smile keeps you shining. The power of a shining like the sun. co laborers we can delightfully feel that we are laborers together. Not for God, but with God. Maybe I could tell you this before we run. Not for him, but with him. We are co-laborers with him. So he didn't call, just send you to go and work. He said, come and work with me. Hallelujah to God, servants of God. Amen. We, per, we pursue his spiritual, amen, anointing. We, when we pray, we ask, my friends, in spiritual building here also, the labor is of human, but the holy drive and power is of God. The laborers are human, human beings, but the drive, the fuel, the synergy, the power is from God. Have you ever seen power? 
Ah, none of you have ever seen power. When you start your engine, you know, and you're going, look, let's go look, open the engine and see if you see the power. But when you put it in gear and step on the gas, it's gone. The power is something you don't see. Yeah. So when you have power, don't walk and demonstrate it. Keep your power cool by yourself. Just do the work that God has given you to do. Don't show up your power. My friends, in spiritual building here, our God Almighty called us to work with him. In spiritual temple, amen, the church, the foundation is of God's personal doings. I said in the spiritual language, the church, the spiritual church, amen, the foundation is of God's personal doings. The material is of God's own preparation. Is God prepare all of you? Is God make you know one of the things that really got me, man? I, you really remember? I cannot get over it. The thing is, for night and day, tell me when when God, when the young lady ran out, uh, Mrs. Abraham ran out the young lady with the baby the night, night, night. Mrs. Abraham, Mrs. Mrs. Abraham run out the young lady, the maid. Come out of me. She said, she said, that bad getting boy where you have no great. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no great stand on me yard and grow with my good son. Come out. And the girl go out with the baby. And when night, when the night comes her darkness, hungry, and when she feed, there's no milk in her breast. The baby crying for hunger. Not even a little water anywhere to give the boy. And she put on the baby. The Bible said she broke down tree limb and make a nest. Like fowl and put the baby in there. I mean to lie in the nest. And she go a distant boat to pray. And she called to God. God said, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I'm going to tell you something that I will get a lot of phone call for. Hold for phone call I'm going to get for this one, you know. But uh, amen. But Sarah was a co-laborer with God uh, to bring Isaac here, to bring Ishmael here. I know this is tough theology. But uh, she brought uh, Ishmael here. Amen. This is tough theology. Amen. But hear what God said to, to her. Said, get up and go and take up the baby boy and feed him. Said, God, what am I going to take? I don't have no milk in my breast. My breast dry. I'm hungry. And the child is hungry. Said, get up and go and take up the boy. This is what God said. Go back and read the Bible. For the purpose for which Ishmael came into the world must be fulfilled. So God take him up. God don't make no failure. God take him up and feed him. He said, he said, he said look, look behind you. Immediately God dug a well. He dug a well and filled it with water. She had water. She was immediately everything. God has everything where you are. You don't have to worry yourself. Right where you are. Master God has something there. Because you're a co-laborer with him. Could take Take care of Ishmael. So God take care of Ishmael. <laughs> Amen. His servants are living stones. God's servants are living stones. In his temple. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ the Redeemer. And his stones are quickening power. <sighs> his stones are like quickening power from God the Almighty. Ah, flowing from his throne, his throne of grace to his people. Have you ever felt that quickening power? Can I tell you this? That every stone of God in God's building is quickened by his power. Yeah, hear what the Bible said? You are lively stones. So, so, some of you are dead like the chair where you sit down. Amen. One day when I'm gone from here, you'll have a nice preacher. You'll, you'll remember me when I'm gone. Amen. But you must, God say you must be lively stone. Lively stone, no man. Have some life in your life, no man. And put on some life in your life, no man. Hallelujah. Because you're a lively stone to build up a spiritual house. 
For dead stone cannot build spiritual house. It take lively stone. Hallelujah here. Amen there. Glory to God there. A dancing of a deer. Amen. Glory to Almighty God. Lively stone to build up spiritual house. As partner with God Almighty. Glory to God somebody. Oh somebody worship God with me. Oh glory to God somebody. Hallelujah. I, there was a song that we, you have always sung. Hallelujah. If I can help somebody. As I passed along. My living shall not be in vain. If I could tell somebody is going wrong. Then my living shall not be in vain. Because you are partners with God. In his vineyard. Let me. His servants. We are living stones. To build a spiritual temple. And the quickening power. For services from God. Uh, the almighty. Uh, amen. And that quickening power is continually flowing. From the throne of grace. To each person. I said quickening. You notice my descriptive word. Quickening power. Quickening. Uh, go back and look. Quick, don't quickening sound like something. Quickening. Don't quickening sound like movement. I know you have a lot of scholars here. Some of you have a background degree. Amen. And I know you are bright. But quickening mean movement. A body movement. A foot movement. A hand movement. A mouth movement. Hallelujah movement. And glory movement. Thank you Jesus movement. Hallelujah. Glory to almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Body movement. Glory to God Almighty. In the spiritual temple of the church, the foundation is of God's personal doings. So the foundation of the church is God's personal doing. The material is of God's own preparation. Is God prepare the material? Yeah, prepare the material. Amen. And the architectural plan is drawn by God. He's both the architect and the builder. Yeah. He, he did the architectural work because nobody can do his mathematical calculation. He does it himself. And if he needs help, he call you on me. Say, I'm going, to, I'm going to establish a church somewhere. And I want you to go there and help me. That's what he said. I, I, why do you think you're here? There are some of you even uh, feel that you should leave from here. Go on. No? In, 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 go on. Go on. After, give you one lick, you come back where you belong to. Go on. Go on. Since you're big and broad, go on. In me box you. God send you to David to do a thing. Do what God sent you to do. Don't play a fool. Go on, go on. You check anybody who leave. God did not send them here. This one knock you. you some of you can't answer. Anybody, go check them. Anybody who leaves DCWC, God did not send them there. In fact, you cannot leave anywhere God sent you. You cannot try it if you think about it. You cannot leave. You cannot leave. His master God sent you. And there's a work he sent you over. And you must fulfill it. Oh, somebody pray with me. You got to do what God has sent you to do. Mango tree must be a mango. Hallelujah. I bet, I bet you both there are some of you sitting at the reach of my voice. Oh, somebody has discouraged you. Said, don't go to DCWC. I bet you there are a lot of you sitting here who have been discouraged. Amen. But you see, it is God said you're going to, I'm going to establish my name in David. And I want you to part, partner with me. And let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? This is tough talk. Nobody don't call me about it. If God is to call him somebody to allow you to fulfill him, he will call him. He will, he will do it. Call him somebody. And if God Almighty is going to allow you to fulfill what he wants you to do, he will call, he will allow your death 
to accomplish what your life should have done. Uh, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God is not a failure. Again, uh, God don't call failure. Hallelujah. Anybody tell you you're a failure, rebuke them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God does not call failure. <laughs> hallelujah. And there are some people, I'm going down to DCWC to help them. Now, you help yourself. I help nobody down here. Or yourself, you can help. <laughs> and I said, God will lick you down clean. And we will bury you too. For you cannot, you must obey him. You must obey God. He said, he's called as a laborer with him. So he's, 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 not, he's not sending you to work. He's calling you to come join with him. In other words, you are yoke fellows. One person can yoke up. Hallelujah to God. Amen. You're a servant of the most high God. And his quickening power for service is given to you. Uh, hey, mighty in the ministry. Is it good to pull the shutters down? Maybe. You're mighty in the ministry. Maybe you feel you're very important. Very important in the church. Very important in the ministry. And you walk with, uh, with uh, shoulders like, like pigeon. <laughs> Amen. Because you are a very important fellow. A uh, bishop is a very important fellow. God will remove your importance. And let you become a simple fellow. Yeah. Are you hearing me somebody? Yes. Um, uh, uh, our ministry may be mighty. We have a mighty good ministry like Paul and Apollos uh, with signs and wonders following our ministry. But uh, in the presence of God, there are nothing. Only workers together with God. The power is God and the might is God and the miracle is God's. All of those gods, we are just simple workers. We are simple workers invested with the grace of almighty God. Hallelujah! Oh, I listen to these guys playing. So have you ever heard? I just where's Paul? In in a gone home, yeah. Oh, you have a way to go home sometime. I go work. I'm working sometime. In, in a gone, you're talking. Let me tell you something good. Um, I, I listen to him play. Yeah, you ever hear that fellow play bass? Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Who oh, a God a play it on him. For him finger them can play bass. You ever hear that young? You didn't know that young fellow we never know A from Bullfoot. <laughs> You, you, uh, your son, you know him and he one even Bullfoot. Uh, one fellow came and told us, uh, there's a fellow we have, he was playing, and they, uh, some people come and say, Pastor Beast, if you don't employ that guy, uh, you won't have any music in the church. You remember that? <laughs> and I didn't employ him because God Almighty can get a crew and sanctify him and a donkey and a raven. Uh, I'll carry, and they say, me get call a, a raven. To, it's, you know what the raven did? The raven went in, in Erad kitchen, in Erad dining room, you know, man. When this, this servant cook Erad steak, put it on the table and ring the bell, ring, 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 food ready. When the when king go, go not a meat himself, oh, the food ready, there's no meat. He said, but sir, help me God, I put the meat here. God sent one bird, can take out the piece of steak and fly with it to the wilderness. Because the man of God need meat. And then, amen. And him sent, listen to me, uh, not a meat on the table. God is not short of people. God is not short of people. God is not short of people. God, listen to me, God will sanctify anybody. Anybody! God will sanctify them and anoint them with the power of the Holy Spirit and let them do what you are doing and do it better. Hallelujah. A privilege. We are privileged. Man, you're lucky for God call you. Could you to God call to come partner with him? Could, yeah, could pray you. God call you to come look and come partner with him in kingdom building. And we're showing up on God. Don't show up on God. Humble yourself. And God will draw near you. Humble yourself. And God will walk with you. God does not walk with the proud. Now the scornful. Humble yourself. And God will bless you. And I'm coming on home now. Oh glory to almighty God. Oh glory to God. 
Oh, glory to God, somebody. Oh, somebody worship God with me. Oh, glory to Almighty God. Hallelujah. Because he, he said, ah, can I tell you, the apostle said, you know what the apostle said, Paul plant, Apollos water, but God give it the increase. Oh, oh, Lord God Almighty, who are we? Who are you in the kingdom? Some of us are plow, we, some of us cut down the bush. For the bush have to clear before you can put the plowman in. So you have the machete man. Go around and cut down the bush. Maybe that is what God called you for. To go cut down bush. Find him going to build a church. And the place is overgrown. And it needs cleaning up. Hallelujah. Some of us to cut down bush. Some are plowman. Amen. Plowman. And after the, gro after the ground is prepared, some must plant the grain. Some of us sow the grain. Oh, glory to Almighty God. You don't understand me. Some are plowman. And some are grains, man. And I remember when my father always uh, grew a lot of agricultural crop. We had to take, catch water. We go up to a place named Rock. One mile away in our zinc pan and carry water to water the plant in the morning before we go to school. And any plant dry up and dead because of the sun, God help your rear hand when you come from school in the evening. Because if you did water the plant, it wouldn't die. So we are supposed to one acre and all of us boys have to go with our zinc pan far away at a place called rock and carry water and water the plants the, the cabbage and the tomato you don't hear me and the, all of them it was a big farmer and in the evening when we come back we got to go back and rock for water again and water them again and in the morning water, you, some of us are just water some of us in the church is just to carry water to water the plant but if you don't water the plant sun will burn it up it's going to die you must water the plant you are, you are encouraged Call somebody and encourage them. Hey, somebody, that's all God saved you for. Call somebody and encourage them and pray with them. Oh, somebody hear me. But that's your portion. You are laborers together with God. Um, you don't hear me. In this spiritual temple, your labors together with God. Oh, finally, the spiritual vineyard is the church. So this is God's vineyard. And there are plants in the vineyard. Mango, avocado, cucumber. <laughs> Some of your face is reasonable for cucumber for you. <laughs> cucumber, tomato, orange. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but you're a plant in God's vineyard. Hallelujah. You may be ginger or mint. Hallelujah. But you're in God's vineyard and you're in there for a purpose. Oh, glory to God. Lord God Almighty, I don't know who you are. Ginger, sister ginger, sister peppermint. I don't know who you are, but you're a plant in God's vineyard. Hallelujah. The vineyard belongs to God. You play the guitar, you play the bass, you play the keyboard, play the trumpet, blow the song, blow the trumpet, make some noise, knock the drum. Hallelujah. Almighty God. I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, do what you are. Oh, glory. Somebody say glory. I don't know who you are. Some sing tenor. Some sing soprano. Some sing bass. Ah, come on now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, ah. oh glory. Ah, glory to God. I don't know who you are on the choir. But you're on the choir to hold your corner. Jesus Christ, help me this morning. Hold your corner. I don't know who you are. You're a singer. You're a plowman. Or you're a grains man. 
or you water the plant. Then there's another one. Amen. You're assigned to pick up the worm. You know the worm, the mother is coming. Amen. And you check all the cabbage and all the tobacco root and all the cabbage and see worm uh, uh, eating it. And you have to uh, spray the worm and get the worm out of the, the, the cultivation. Hallelujah. You have your special place in the vineyard of the Lord. Don't let nobody fool you. And I'm going to tell you where you are. And then we go because you don't know where you are. I'm going to tell you. I set you down here. I set it down here, you know, everybody, amen, all the auxiliaries, amen, the administrators, the pastor and his group, the pastor and his group, uh, the board of elders, amen, the family life ministries, amen, that taking the father, the mother, the picnic, them, everybody, family life ministries, women ministry, men's ministry, life builders ministry, you don't even know that yet, I'm going to bring that up to you, life builders ministry, well, it's, it's in the minutes of the general assembly, each church must have a life builders movement. I'm going to assign one of these elders uh, to be life builders. You don't understand me. That's why the church administrators, the board of elders, family life ministries, women ministries, men's ministries, life builders ministries, youth ministries, the choir and the praise team, the ushers, hospitality group, uh, janitorial. Who you think is so? Every Sunday you come and you dirty up the church and you don't realize uh, there's someone named janitorial and come in on Monday morning and clean up the place so that next Sunday you come back it clean is not said yet for you bringing a lot of dirt in here somebody must clean up the church when you're gone somebody must go around the bathroom and clean it up and sanitize the place when you're gone somebody must be assigned to that particular area and named janitorial you have the usher and the hospitality group and the technical team in that little room down there Oh, they are the one who are transmitting the thing all over the world. They are very important working with God. Amen. Are you hearing me? The technical team, the pastoral team, the medical ministries, you don't know. If you notice sometimes some people feel bad, maybe they eat late and they never get the breakfast, never second, and they start to feel bad. You see some little people run around, God runs so with them. A medical team. <laughs> A medical team, them. Then no, then no fear. Oh Lord God Almighty! Somebody worship God with me, now, please. That's a medical team. The medical, the God around the back. A medical, the medical. Hallelujah! Life builders. Ministries and youth ministries, amen, and a choir and praise team. How could we run? How could a church run without them? Huh? In, in as much as some, some of them not smile when they sing, some of them look like they grow with their auntie when they sing, but we can't do it without them. <laughs> yeah. Can't do it out there, man. I see the musicians sometimes trying to get some movement, some body movement out of some people. They could have played till them drop dead. Nobody now, then they don't have nobody movement. Dead as a chair, they sit no little body movement. Oh, God Almighty. The other night, last week, Sunday night, when you have appreciation from your husband, you, you, you didn't see we had a little body shift, man. Ah, 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 ah. And it's not only every now and then, up on the radio, up on the TV, little body movement, come and we do a thing. Amen. Glory to God. It keep us going. Yes, sir. It keep us young and keep us happy. Yes. Hey, somebody hear me. Hallelujah to Almighty God. You know, see. The ushers and the hospitality, janitorial, the technical team. What would we do without them? Look at them. Some of, some of them are picking in, but them in the control room there, sending something all over the air. Some in Australia said so they here, and in the Philippines. There's a group in England hearing me right now. And them in the team, they're doing it. All me do up here preaching, but them pick up the something technically and send it over mass. A God wave, and the, and the wind carried all over the world. Uh, 
they are part, they are part them with God. Them, them, look when them, just some of them just born. But the labor, they are laborers, laborers with God. Laborers with God. Uh, laborers. Hello, laborers with God in the control room. Hallelujah. You young laborers with God. God call you in the control room to partner with him. Laborers. Woo. Laborers with God. Hallelujah. Maybe when in the next few minutes when church done, we should you, when you greet them, just say, laborers with God. Give them a handshake. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the anointing of God up on me. Shake and say, laborers with God. Hallelujah. Laborers, laborers. Hey, tell the man who played the bass guitar. Lab I, actually, I told him my work will soon finish because when the Lord comes, no preaching is not going on in heaven, but bass guitar in heaven. No preaching. God have a bass guitar up there put on for somebody. And one trumpet. Amen. For angel love to play a trumpet. But no preaching no going to go on up there. For nobody know there for anybody to preach to. Hallelujah. Glory to Almighty God. But music will be up there. Oh glory to Almighty God. Yeah. Touch your neighbor and say laborers. Laborers. Hallelujah. We're not done, we're not, we're not done, but we're going to stop now. Yeah, the technical team. That's where we did reach now. Technical team and the pastoral team. Oh, and the medical team and medical ministry and the security team. Uh, there are some people didn't even remember that they are head of security. But they have not meeting for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, the security team and the, and the prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Them people who spend all night, all night prayer, say them praying for bishop and them praying for the church. Instead, they go out in bed, go sleep. Them have a akodori all night prayer and fasting, praying for the church that the devil will not overtake the church. Lord God Almighty, pray and fasting, pray and fasting, pray and fasting intercessory oh, they, that intercessory group uh, instead they go have them breakfast but them having them have fasting today instead they go eat them breakfast amen god don't want them to have the breakfast must be in fasting and prayer else demon will knock us off clean clean the power of satan will overcome us they need somebody they need somebody in the church who can miss the breakfast and miss them lunch and miss them dinner and miss them supper and see with god and and he, Lord God man, and talk to God for the church yeah 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 yes oh glory to God almighty hallelujah glory when you meet the prayer and fasting group and you shake them and just say hello laborers hello laborers Laborers together with God. Oh, I come. Yes, I pull the curtain. Oh, yes, sir. Those who intercede with God. What about the food pantry workers? You ever see them people that serve food to the hungry? The food pantry workers, Lord. Those who feed the poor. Those who feed them. Oh, with yeah. Hey. These ministries, you know, you know how many I have called so far? It's 19 ministries I've already called in this little church here. 19. And still counting. You are laborers together. God said to tell you. He woke me up. I got a message from him. He said, I'm, I'm set to tell you that you are co-laborers with him. They are co-partner with him. That is a message that God from the Almighty to give you. That you are called as co-partners. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Then you bless me. You forget those who give their offering on their tithes. You know something? Can I tell you something? Ask, ask Marlander Christie. He will tell you that. Ask Pastor Oral and Freddie McLeod, and they'll tell you that to err, to
to air our Sunday morning service and our Wednesday evening Bible studies is not for nothing. We have to pay every time we use a song. Take the song, I Love You, Lord. Every time we sing it, we have to pay for it. Because I'm going to ask you to sing it now for me. Every time we sing it, we have to pay for it. The, the guys who sit in the control room, amen. They can, it's not free. It's not free. They will tell you that they have to put the thing on the air. And we've got to pay for the airwaves. So what about the, you group who give your offering? And pay your tithes. That's where it goes. Hey, that's where it goes. Hey, the insurance people, the insurance people came the other day to reinsure the building. And they turned it down. Why they turned it down? Crocs were in the driveway. You ever hear me crossing? You ever hear me crossing? Crocs were in the driveway. And the insurance, insurance company turned down the crocs. That we have to fix the crop. Why? Because one of you ladies with your spike heel might just not for, not for the men for for, for your shoes heel broad. <laughs> but one of you ladies in your spike heel might just step in the crack and you fall down and break your foot on the insurance has to pay for it. They said we have to fix it and we had to fix it. We had to fix it. cost thousands of dollars, not hundred, thousands of dollars to fix a little crack from out there go out there. Who pay for it? You. Partner, you partners, you laborers, you are the one who pay for it. Hey, and it's not done. We have to paint. If I hear people paint dirt, we have to buy, get some paint and spirit and paint it, make it look good because it's a house of God. Hey, you, you notice the roof of the church you want to wash? You, you elder, you better sister, you want to wash and stop looking for me. Hey, Amen. The roof, the roof want to wash. You have to get somebody go up there with. And wash it else insurance, turn it down. Amen. Because it's a house of God and the roof must look good. Am I talking to anybody? I'm coming on home now. You are laborers together with God. Every time you drop a dime in the offering plate, you are laboring with God in his vineyard. And God did not call you for nothing. He has equipped you with his power. And his ability, can you imagine? It's only God's ability could play the guitar. It's, it's Master God playing the bass drum. No Master God are doing it. Paul, Paul couldn't. You ever hear him? You, you, you ever hear him on the praise team? Hey, find out. Somebody tell me what happened to the power. What wasn't on the praise team before church done. Somebody tell me what happened to him. Because he wasn't in the praise I will find, find out from them people up here where is the power who was should be in the praise and worship team? People like those, when you meet them, say, Hello, laborer. Hello, partner. Fellow laborer with God. Hello, partner with God in kingdom building. Hey, fellow laborer. I, I notice. At least you can whisper it to your neighbor. Just turn around and look at somebody and say, Hello, fellow laborer. Say it now. Yes. Yes. A laborer is with God. Hey. Hello. Somebody point, somebody point a finger up here on us and say, Hello, fellow laborer. Uh, let me feel good to know. Yes. I'm a laborer with God. Hallelujah. God's vineyard. Hallelujah. May the peace of God rest with you. I love you, Lord. I want you to worship God right now. And the, the music people, I'm going to music me. I love it. Is Lord and the, behind me. Get up. Come on, Lord. Put on. You stand. Everybody stand with me. And blaze out that. Yes. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yes. 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 I love you, Lord. I love you. For your birthday. Yes. I love you, Lord. 
Glory to God. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, talk to me. Thank you for watching our church service today on YouTube. We hope you took something away from the message and it will stay with you throughout the week. If you are not a member of our church, we would love to have you join us in person for one of our upcoming services. Please visit our website for more information on service times and locations. We also encourage you to connect with us on social media and sign up for our mailing list to stay updated on all the latest happenings at our church. Remember, you're always welcome here. May God bless you and keep you in his love. Have a great week.